All right, guys, today's subject is pitching. That pesky distance from 10 to 40 yards that everyone seems to struggle with. It's a really challenging shot because it's a miniature swing, okay? Generally, you're gonna get away with a lot more with your full swing because you've got more time to unpack those issues that you may have, whether it be your swing plane or your club face or your pivot. With a pitch shot, you don't have anywhere near as much time. So it makes it a lot more challenging. So what do I see? What are the common mistakes that I see with my students when they're pitching the golf ball? It really boils down to three particular areas. We've got to start with a setup first and foremost. It makes a lot of sense, right? Like little building blocks. We've got to make sure we set up to it because the setup influences the bottom of your arc, where that club's going to hit the ground. It also influences the shape of the golf swing. And important to understand that we don't want to be too vertical and we don't want to be too flat. I see both all the time. There's a nice happy place somewhere in between the two that's going to work really, really well for you, okay? When we set up to a golf ball, it's essential that we set up in a way that will allow us to hit the ball first, okay? We've got to make good contact. And what I see with most people is when they put that golf ball in front of them, they generally push their hands way forward, which drops the right shoulder back. So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm bending too far to the right. My bottom of my arc is way too far behind the golf ball. And that's going to cause me, of course, to either hit behind the ball or hit up on the golf ball. So it's very, very important to understand here that when we set up to a golf ball, obviously you can vary your ball position, not by much, but you can vary it depending on what type of trajectory pitch you want to hit. But you've got to make sure that that right shoulder isn't too low. What I like to feel, and I've talked about this a little bit in my chipping as well, I like to feel like I'm almost set up left hand low when I'm even hitting pitch shots. So if I go left hand low, you can see it naturally steepens this right shoulder. And then I'll do that on occasion. Every week or so, I'll just actually hit some shots left hand low. And then what I'll do is I'll replace one hand with the other, trying to keep the right shoulder, relatively speaking, in the same place. So it's very important to understand you don't want your right shoulder lower than your left any more than your right hand is lower than your left. Any excessive movement to the right after that is going to have you ascending too much. And that's what I see a lot of the time. Okay. We also want to make sure when we set up to the golf ball that our club face is slightly open. We want to utilize the bounce, okay? We've got to make sure that that club face is a little bit open here, and that actually elevates the leading edge. We want to make sure that club sliding underneath the golf ball. We don't want it digging. We don't want to be creating orange peels as we strike the ground. So make sure that club face is slightly open prior to gripping the golf club. Don't put your hands on and then twist the golf club. That's going to do absolutely nothing for you. So there's two pretty big steps, okay? Remember, the objective here is to have a controlled distance. So let's talk about that for a second. The pitch shot is a half swing, all right? And there's a lot of halves that we need to unpack here. The first thing is we've got a lot of levers in the golf swing. Our wrists are a lever. Imagine banging a post into a into the ground here. We hinge and unhinge, okay? That's a lever in the golf swing. The arm, the right arm in the back swing is gonna fold, okay? And the body is gonna pivot. Now we do all of those to the fullest extent. We're gonna be hinging the wrists or the club about 90 degrees. We're gonna be folding the right arm about 90 degrees and we're gonna be rotating the body about 90 degrees. And that's gonna give us all the leverage we want if we wanna hit a full shot. So what are we gonna do for a half shot? Well, we're gonna do half of everything, okay? So that means when you set up to it, if you can picture hinging all the way up here for a full shot, halfway is gonna be somewhere in here. It's gonna be closer to 45 degrees. If I hinge too much with my wrists and don't rotate my body, I'm gonna to get too steep. I'm now too vertical. Conversely, if I rotate my body and I don't hinge my wrists, I'm going to get too deep. I'm going to be too flat and that's going to cause some problems. So we need to sort of understand how we blend the wrist hinge, the right arm folding, the body pivoting. It's like a dance. It's a marriage between these things. And if we do that, we're going to be on plane. What I like to do here is I'm going to go ahead and set up to it 
and I'm going to put another golf ball about a yard the other side of this ball. I'm going to go ahead and hopefully stay in the camera here. There we go. Good stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set up to it with a slightly open face. Imagine here I'm going to hit one right through that hoop, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and make sure my right shoulder remains steep. I'm going to align slightly left of my target. Guys, slightly left of your target. You don't want to get too far across it. So I'm going to open up just a little bit to the left of my target. And the reason I like to do that, I'm going to go ahead and face the camera, is if I align slightly left, I feel like I've got a little bit more room for my arms to swing freely to the left side of my body. Okay, very important to understand that. So I'm going to align a little bit left. And as I set up to it here, I'm going to stand a little closer to the golf ball than I would a regular golf shot, but I'm not going to stand as close as I would if I was chipping. All right, so it's somewhere in between. And then I'm very simply going to, without lifting my arms, I'm going to go ahead and lift that club and point it directly at the golf ball so I can no longer see the golf ball that's one yard in front of me. You can see that, I'm going to do it one more time. Sit up to it just normally. I'm going to lift my club. I'm going to make sure I can no longer see the ball in front of me. If I do that, I've hinged my wrists about half the distance. You can see here, I've got plenty of room to do more. It's about halfway. So I'm going to do it again, lift it up. I'm going to go ahead and cover it up. Okay. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to simply rotate my body towards the camera. And if you see there, I've got enough elevation where the club head is above my hands. That's really where we want to be. That club's resting on top of my right forearm which is exactly what I want as I'm approaching impact, all right? If it's under the forearm, I'm too flat. If it's more out towards my left forearm, more above the lid of my hat, it's too steep. This is a really cool drill. You've got to give it a shot. Remember, your arms are being transported by your body, your upper body in spe specifically. I really like to feel like my rib cage is definitely engaged on the shot. I'll even put a head cover underneath my right arm just to make sure I'm not lifting with my arms, okay? You start separating and lifting with your arms, you got no chance. So just stick a head cover under here. Yeah, let's just keep it super simple, okay? So one more time, here we go. Little rotation to the right, halfway into my turn. One more time, halfway into my turn. And you can see here I'm in good shape. If I do it face on, there I am right here, halfway into my turn. Notice the distance between my hands and my right thigh here. I'm not jammed in here, am I? Can you see that? I've got lots of space. So I'm maintaining some length in my right arm, and the longer the arms remain in the golf swing, the easier it is to find your radius. So that's your backswing, very important to understand. What I see a lot of is either picking it up, over leveraging the wrists, or under leveraging the wrists and dragging the handle to the inside. Of course, that drops the bottom of the arc way, way too far behind you. So if you can find that balance between the wrist hinge, a little bit of a soft right arm, okay, you're going to feel it folding just a hair. I don't want that right arm too straight because, of course, if it is too straight, we can see immediately the glove, of course, is going to work out from underneath my uh, shoulder here, okay, my armpit. So that's where we want to be. This backswing is incredibly important for pitching. So there we go. Boom. I got a little bit of hinge. Oh, it's just for me, just to give you a feel. I just feel like my thumbnail is moving towards me. Okay. So all I'm doing here is just lifting my thumbnail up towards me. I like to use my trigger finger here to almost feel like I'm pulling the club towards me. Okay. Some of you might feel like you prefer to push down a little bit on the handle, on the, on the left hand. What I like to do is feel like I'm pulling my nail back towards me. So here we go. Boom, I'm good to go. So there's your backswing. Your through swing, hmm, all sorts of issues I see with through swing. We're going to do this from a slightly different angle, okay? If I stand out in front right here, get my glove out from underneath my right arm. Remember, that's really important. If you could picture here, my hands are to the side. 
I'm gonna go ahead and get my hands from here about 90 degrees. If I do about half of that, I'm coming down to about 45. Notice that gets my hands to about my waist on both sides of my body. Guys, that's pretty much your pitch, okay? Right in here to right about here. Once we start to get up parallel to the ground with our arms and up obviously above our shoulder, we're working on the miniature swing, all right? That's a whole different video. We can get to that a little bit later. So again, looking at getting some good symmetry, that's really, really important. Now, the last thing we need to focus on, of course, is your movement through the golf ball. Really, really important to understand that when I turn through the golf ball here, I don't want my lead leg to be like a spaghetti noodle. I don't want to be collapsing as I come into the golf ball. And I see that an awful lot where people essentially are losing a ton of height. They collapse as they strike the golf ball. What we want to do here is maintain some height, okay? Length is the answer. If you've got length, you're going to have rotation. So when I swing through a golf ball, I'm really focused on keeping my length. I want to make sure my arms are long. I want to make sure my lead leg is long. And I definitely want to make sure that my chest remains up and not down. Okay, if you start to collapse as you're coming into the golf ball, you're going to be very, very inconsistent. So it looks something like this. Notice I'm finishing right down here at waist high. I'm going to hit one more, okay? Let's see if we can get this one close. Come on, break to the right a little bit. There we go. Nice and tall. Definitely don't want to collapse, okay? So I hope that helps. I've got some good visuals here. Get to work, okay? Really, really important to work on your fundamentals. You do that, you're going to see some great results.